Hey, welcome to the Monday Morning Show. I'm Grant Cohn. That's Ryan Hensley. We're your uh, hosts, is the word. We both have really yeah. nice setups right now. Everyone's been complaining about my new uh, microphone, saying I'm like kind of quiet and muffled. Well, I switched it around, and now I'm talking directly into the microphone. So if I need to turn it up, turn it down a little bit, you guys let me know. You guys quality control the hell out of this one, all right? Quality I think some controlling. people are missing that the, the loud popping mic a little oh, bit a little I authentic, see, authenticity I see what is gone. you mean yeah. maybe i need to bring back the lo-fi settings and just start screaming into the microphone because yeah because people were complaining about that too yeah it's, you can't please anyone everyone you can't please everyone no you really can't no all right so the title of the show is that uh, is 49ers quarterback brock purdy aced a pre-draft cognitive test mm -hmm. um this came out recently in the athletic matt barrels wrote it been Working with Matt Barrows a long time. Great guy. Read the article. If you have a subscription, I don't. Sorry. Yeah. I made a decision not to pay for any subscriptions. I don't know why they do that format. They should just have advertisements like everyone else. That's what I would say. Anyway, um, I've read excerpts, though, and uh, clearly it's about – it's supposed to be an updated Wonderlick. Like, kind of like how the 40s um, – the 40-yard dash is outdated. You really look at, like, ex acceleration and then full stride speed, like miles per hour and stuff like that. Well, yeah. I think they're thinking that the Wonderlick's a little um, outdated and it's not necessarily testing quarterbacks' mental aptitude in, in ways that transfer to the NFL field. And I think there's a new one, and the, the exact results don't come out because it's private information. But according to this new test, Brock Purdy was, like, off the charts. And, it and I think the Niners are now thinking that in terms of, like, he could be the next Drew Brees because what made Drew Brees Drew Brees was he was the fastest, best decision maker, and he was accurate. Was he a great mm -hmm. athlete? No. Was he big? No. Did he have a strong arm? No. Now, Drew Brees is one on one. But what do you think of these uh, this information about this uh, test that he took last year? Well, it's good that it's evolving. I mean, I, I think a lot of the stuff that uh, scouts do to analyze draft prospects is getting a little outdated, and th it seems to be an advancement. Um, I think it's important, obviously, decision making, how you process things, how quickly you process things, is extremely important maybe one of the most important things especially in Kyle Shanahan's offense I would say that's one of the most important things for them so uh the, the fact that Brock Purdy tested well on this what is it a psychological test is what they're calling it a cognitive test um it's not surprising based on the way he played um I know Trey Lance tested really well on this as well um so you know good things that's a good thing and hope maybe this is a way to board what what scouts need to do is look for quarterbacks with experience accuracy in college and then they test well on this new test we'll, we'll see i know that the things are constantly evolving they did the wonder lick for a while now that's changed so who knows how long this is going to go and if it ends up being the true measure but uh, it's good to hear that brock purdy tested so high on it that trans trey lance tested so high on it and it's, it's not a surprise brock purdy's been successful yeah uh, apparently brock purdy was in like the 90th percentile and maybe Trey Lance was in the 80th percentile, but both if you're above 80, you're in the elite range anyway. And mm -hmm. I think, I think tr they, they felt that Trey was the highest of, in, in his draft uh, class in this test and that Purdy was the highest too. Now, if they really thought it was the most important metric, maybe, they maybe Purdy would have been a first-round pick. But maybe now that teams yeah. have seen that, that this translates all of a sudden. Remember in the movie Waterboy? When when the water boy starts to tear it up the whole league and everyone's trying to find the next water boy and they got yeah. like a towel boy and they just get yeah. I don't know. I mean, people looking for the next Brock Purdy might find some really bad quarterbacks this year. But if this thing is predictive, this aptitude test, apparently Mahomes was off the charts as well. Maybe we'll start seeing fewer busts. And uh, uh, instead of people just banking on athletes with strong arms, maybe it'll be that plus a better um, mental test. Well, it makes you wonder what the water boys test scores would have been. But also, uh, if they can find someone with these high test scores, but that also has arm strength and size, you know, maybe that's the key, right? I think the only thing holding Brock Purdy back talent wise would be his size and arm strength. Um, so, you know, if you could find the arm strength, the size and these high cognitive test scores, that may be your uh, future Hall of Fame quarterback, your franchise quarterback that you're looking for. So. What I don't like about this, though, is it kind of makes it seem like it's the most important thing for a quarterback. Yeah. And I would disagree with that. You know, maybe it's the most important thing for a quarterback in Kyle Shanahan's offense because Kyle Shanahan's offense is unnecessarily complicated. Now, he's good at what he does.
but it's so complicated and everyone knows it and it's not necessarily like young athlete friendly it's not like let's get the best athletes in college football and throw them in here like no it takes there's a learning curve right so if that's what you're looking for then all of a sudden this is really important but maybe maybe instead of just drafting the smartest players maybe you still want to draft the best athletes and maybe you want to adjust your scheme so that the best athletes can flourish in it yeah anyway just say I mean, you know maybe it's a combination i think there's some things that are just unlike you just can't see until they're in the game and maybe this test does push that you know push towards those unseen things um, but i think a lot of guys are just gamers man and you can't really tell what you got until you see it on the field you know so i don't know and also i think it depends on the offense as well you know kyle shannon's offense i think this score might matter more because it's about quick decision making um and accuracy so maybe and it's about kyle it's about kyle yeah it's about yeah. kyle that's what i don't like about this is i again i feel like kyle just he doesn't want he doesn't really respect the quarterback position you know he's not looking for an artist out there who can take over and be the star steve young john elway joe montana he wants he wants like an intel pentium 2 processor you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, just yeah. freaking read the defense as fast as possible and get the ball to the right person as fast as possible. It's not that hard! And yeah. it, 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 it almost makes it seem like he thinks he could do it. Like, he's smart. Yeah, I'm hella yeah. smart. I, make, I always know where to go with the ball. Like, I could do it. And it's like, yeah, man, maybe that's why you've gone through 15 quarterbacks in seven years. You know what I mean? Like, is there more to the position? That's a big part of it. But there's so much more to the position that is processing and toughness. Yeah, because frankly, toughness is a joke. He always says he wants toughness in a quarterback. Uh huh. That's why his quarterbacks get hurt so much because you're not protecting yeah. them. And you got to protect them. There is no toughness, man. They're 100 pounds. They're 150 pounds smaller than the guys hitting them. No, protect your quarterback and uh, get an athlete back there. You know what I'm saying? Like how many six foot guys? Now, to Brock Purdy's credit, he is an athlete, but still, I yeah. mean, he's a little fella. How, how are? So I, I don't understand why toughness is an issue. I mean, all these guys are tough at this point. You make it to the NFL, you're a quarterback, you've been hit your whole life. They're all tough. What I mean, what what is he implying by like like what's the opposite of this? There's some like uh, like the tough as opposed to like, are you the kind of quarterback who will take the hit and deliver the throw because it's open and Kyle Shanahan schemed it up? Or are you gonna abandon the open throw and run around? You know what I'm saying? He wants the guy to stand it and take the hit. But yeah. that's why his quarterbacks go down all the time. That's what yeah. you want. As a coach. You, did you see that chart that uh, Warren Sapp put out uh, regards to – so he put out a, a chart last five years about yak versus uh, depth of target. And mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan's offense has been towards the very top in yak every year, but also mm -hmm. towards the very bottom in yards uh, per target. And I, I think Kyle Shanahan focuses too much on this offensive scheme that he has and – it also is directly related, in my opinion, to why they are the most injured team mm -hmm. because they're depending on Yak. They're depending on guys running through multiple targets. Um, and it, it's just it speaks on the system that Kyle Shanahan believes in. And I think he needs to maybe adjust his system towards the players he has. And I think that's the mistake he made with, with Trey Lance, in my opinion. I think it's funny how the Jimmy Garoppolo experience kind of shaped Kyle Shanahan's view of quarterbacks. Like, I'm guessing Kyle, uh, Jimmy wouldn't score so high on this test no offense and maybe i'm wrong i'm just guessing that this is not a jimmy garoppolo test man decision making quick decisions that's not what he does on the field maybe maybe in life yeah but maybe not not in the field so i couldn't see. so maybe from kyle's perspective man if i could just find a real test that really showed me who the quick good decision makers were out there that's what i need and that's what he got uh, also during, with brock they kept making a big deal of it when they was drafted never missed a game due to injury like they were trying to jinx it never yeah. missed a game Due to injury. And then you put him on the Niners first start, injured. A start, seriously injured. And so that maybe, maybe that says something about Kyle. Hey, Kyle, you took a guy who'd never gotten hurt, and you got him hurt. Or he got hurt under your watch. What can you yeah. do about it? Yeah. There's not enough focus on protecting these quarterbacks, in my opinion. Like, that has to Is there be, any focus I, on it? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think there is. I don't think there is. No. I think it's – I mean, it, it, obviously, he takes in the, the scheme of protection in, in, into account, but – not at a high enough priority. Like it has to be one of the main focuses of every play is protecting your quarterback. Um, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't calculate risk versus reward for any player, not just quarterback. Um, and I think that's something that he needs quality control to step in and uh, oversee. What was funny is like, sometimes he does it well though, right? Like if he goes against, like when he went against the Cowboys, 
He didn't let Michael Parsons wreck the game. He approached Michael Parsons with the appropriate respect. When he plays the Rams, he never lets Aaron Donald wreck the game. He has very specific game plans on offense, like, look, we're going to get the ball out quick. We're not going to tempt fate here. For whatever reason, he decided that the Eagles needed to be exposed. So on that, what, first drive, he called that really slow developing seven-step drop play action. Like, oh, you guys are a yak team. What yeah. the hell are you doing? You can't block that. Yeah. And so he, they, couldn't, they didn't block it. So I, I don't understand why you even call that. Like, you are a yak team with a, you know, with a quarterback who looks like he's 11 years old, who's back there because he has a quick first step and he's a Pentium 2 processor in his head. That's it. Mm-hmm. Protect him. Get the ball out of his damn hand. That's why, that's why you like him, right? Because he can, he can get the ball out of his hands quick. Well, don't call yeah. a seven-step drop. Yeah, especially when you want him to step up in the pocket and he's not yeah. stepping up into the pocket. That's not something Brock yeah. Purdy really did all year. Uh, it just doesn't seem like he calculates these type of things. And then why are you wanting play action so early? I know a lot of people say you don't have to run the ball to run play action. I get that. But it feels like in this particular game, it would have been smarter to run the ball a few times and, and establish that, see how the, the defense is responding before you actually run a play action. I mean, if you want to call that play, you can't have just a, a – a penny of two processor at quarterback. You need Trey Lance. You need a big body who's also smart, who can step up in the pocket. And you also need a better tight end than Tyler Croft. If you want to block a, a serious edge rusher with a tight end, don't do it with Tyler Croft. You got to draft a tight end this year. We'll talk about that as well. So I love the, the cognitive test. That I love this. This is new information, but I'm a little worried that the Niners are going to like go all in with just, I'm going to say nerds at quarterback, but like just students. Not yeah. athletes, a quarterback. You got to get both. That's why Lance is so intriguing. He is both. And maybe mm-hmm. Purdy's both too. He is, he's very quick. I, I think one of the things I was most intrigued about Purdy was how well he moved. Yeah. How well he moved and went off script. That's what I think is intriguing about him, not how quickly he processes and does what Kyle says. Because frankly, how good was Purdy really at processing? He checked the ball down relentlessly. Is that processing? Towards the end, yeah. I will say he's yeah. better than... Better than um, Jimmy by far. Like he will actually look at fields. He'll go through his first, second, third reads. Is Jimmy he Drew Brees of, though? I don't. I don't know about that. I'm not ready to call him Drew Brees or any any Hall of Fame quarterback at this point. It, it, I, it, just like I'm not ready to write off Trey Lance. I'm not ready to crown Brock Purdy. I got to see more. You know, we'll see about that. Will SF clear cap via trade or two? If so, who? You know, it's it's hard. Trading doesn't really clear cap. It kind of ma- puts you in cap hell a lot of times. If you've given out, if it's a high priced player and it's early in their contract and you've given out a, uh, a signing bonus, it gets accelerated, you get in trouble. So, the, like what the, what, Niners, what the Niners try to do is extend, restructure and extend players, yeah. which makes them cheaper in the, in the short term and then sort of more expensive later. But the cap goes up. So, I think last year, well, last year what they did was they um, restructured and extended Armstead and Kittle, two guys. Mm-hmm. This year, I'm thinking it's going to be Fred Warner and someone else. Hopefully not Armstead again, but it could be Armstead. I don't know. One player they could possibly trade would be Kinlaw. I believe that frees up $2 million if they trade Kinlaw. Does um, it? So I, I think it's a, it's a, he's, he's like $4 million, and if they trade him, um, they'll save $2 million, I believe. Uh, I think that's the numbers. But outside of that, I think they're going to just depend highly on restructuring this year. No, that's only if it's probably. post-June 1. Only if it's post-June 1. Pre-June post-June 1, they June save 1. nothing. Yeah. That's the thing. Pre-June yeah. 1, they save nothing. So – they could, but the thing about getting that post June one is like, are you going to use that cap space at that point? You could. I mean, the Niners made that 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 trade for Christian McCaffrey midseason. Yeah, so you could. Yeah. You kind of yeah. want that cap space now, though, going into free agency. You right? want it now. You can't get yeah. it now with with Kinlaw. So yeah, they could probably restructure Fred Warner and Traverius Ward, two good defenders in their in their twenties who are going to be here for a few more years. They're definitely doing my... Traverius right. That's the. That's I would think the, so. That the makes word. sense. Yeah, Charvarius and, uh, and Fred. And, and it doesn't necessarily extend the contract. You add a void year. It just makes the, the final two years more expensive and less hard to trade yeah. or cut or release. But if, if you're thinking about a player you don't necessarily anticipate trading or cutting and releasing in the next two, three years, do it like Warner Yeah, or Traverius. Ho- hopefully they don't do Armstead and they let that contract ride Because you might want to cut. Ar- Let's talk about Armstead real quick. Nothing against Eric yeah. Armstead. But you, might, you have some flexibility. Mm-hmm. He missed half a season and didn't. he basically didn't have a season this year. If that happens again next year, they could cut him in 2024 and save almost $12 million in salary cap space. You might want to do that. You might want to wait and see. But if you extend him now, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Yeah, the thing about Armstead is so it's, it's just disappointing because he, we know that he has that potential to be no doubt a, a great 
Uh, he just hasn't performed or been healthy this last year, and he hasn't played at the level where we all think he can play at. So hopefully he earns his money this year. That would be key. You know what's crazy? Great athlete. I, was watching, I was watching, speaking of players that haven't earned their uh, salary, um, Debo Samuel, man, I was watching his combine video. He was so fast, man. Like <gasps> he, he was like just he slim was and just quicker athletic. back then. Yeah. He needs to get back into that shape. I agree. Um, I saw a rumor today. I, I don't hope it's not true, but uh, some somehow Debo has a broken foot. I, it, it's not confirmed, but I just saw that tweet go out by some fans. So I don't know if that's true or not. But regardless of whether that's true, I know I'll find out. You guys let us know in the chat if that's actually yeah, let us know or just BS. But he's got to get in tip top shape, man. Like he was in that combine because he looked phenomenal in that combine. <clears throat> I'd like to see that Debo come back. Yeah, I'd love to know what Debo would do right now in the combine. What would he weigh? What would he run? I bet he'd weigh two twenty three and run a. F I would don't think he'd be in the four fours. I bet you. I bet you he wouldn't. He was four four eight at the time. He was think. moving. Yeah. Bring back Jimmy <laughs> for two dollars. Hey man, you're gonna have to pay a lot more for that. Stephen Pryor says Commanders just released slot Bobby McCain a few minutes ago. Don't know a ton about him, but maybe a cheap replacement for Ward or Gibson. Thoughts? Um, Bobby hmm. McCain. I don't know about much about Bobby McCain. I think let's check it out. I honestly think the 49ers are in a good spot. I mean, I don't think I, originally I thought they were going to be able to re sign Emmanuel Mosley, but it doesn't look like it. They have his market value is crazy high right now, unexpected. Uh, I think I saw something where like 15, 16 million for, for Emmanuel Mosley. I, I don't know if he's going to actually get that, but if he does, I don't see the 49ers bringing him back. That's for sure. Yeah, this um, guy but, is almost. 30 um he's a nickel he hasn't missed a game in three years i don't see the niners spending on a nickel i don't i think i mean they, they drafted samuel womack last year for that job i don't see him doing it on a 30 year old nickel they got ward it. and lenore they got uh womack you know if they can draft uh, you know one or two dbs this year i think they'll be fine maybe a safety i think they'll be okay it looks like the comments are telling saying that's fake news about debo so good yeah you never know what, what, what's true on twitter um what okay uh let's next topic this is something i was thinking about this morning spencer burford i think there's a chance they move him to right tackle let me just lay out the case it's they they need a right tackle if they don't bring back mike mcglinchy they need a right tackle a starter um they could draft a guy and start a rookie but they don't typically like starting rookies unless it's a first round pick. They started McGlinchey as a rookie. That didn't go so well. Never yeah. went so well for McGlinchey. But they didn't start Aaron Banks right away. Uh, they they did start Burford right away, but he split time. Uh, they would have to trade up pretty high. They could do it, but I don't think they want to. When they drafted Burford, I thought they drafted him to replace McGlinchey. He didn't play guard in college. He played tackle, left and right, mostly left. And I thought they was like, okay, he's going to a one-year red shirt. Then they'll, he'll replace McGlinchey in 2023. Well, instead of red shirting, he got on the field at right guard for most of the season, and I think that's probably a better prep than doing nothing. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I, the Niners have never invested in right guard. The right guards they've had have been guys off the street, Mike Person, Daniel Brunskill, undrafted free agents, like low-level free agents. I can't imagine they spent an early fourth on the future right guard. It seemed more like he's the future right tackle. Um, mm -hmm. He's got long, hand, long arms, quick feet, and he's only a half inch shorter than – Trent Williams, you could put him there, and then you could sign Jake Brendel or another center, uh, and you could um, have a competition at right guard, a position the Niners don't seem to value. Uh, that's, yeah. that's what I think could happen. What do you think? You know, I've heard that. So first I would say that to me the most important positions on the O-line, and I think most people would agree, is your, your tackle, your bookends, right? You can make do with some of these other guys at center and guard, um, centers obviously important from a mental standpoint, but I feel like you can find centers and guards a lot easier than you can find right tackles. When I watched Burford last year, he did okay at guard, yeah. just yeah. kind of okay, right? And so for me to see that jump where he's going from right guard to an improvement over Mike McGlinchey at right tackle is hard for me to believe and hard for me to see. Now, I was completely surprised by Aaron Banks and his jump from freshman to sophomore year. Right. So Maybe Burford will have the same path, but for me, it's not It's not a comfortable move. That's fair. That's yeah. definitely fair. Think about it this way, though. He was playing out of position last year. He's a mm -hmm. tackle. And I know people said he could go either way, but he didn't play guard in college. It's like 
when they moved Panay Sewell or when they moved Aaron Banks just from, from left guard to right guard. That ruined his whole – they had to move him back to left. Burford yeah. went from left tackle to right guard. That's kind of a, a big transition. Seems yeah. to be, it would be a little bit more natural – out. But I, how good is he really? I don't know. If he, if he wasn't a particularly good guard, is he all of a sudden going to be a good right tackle? It seems like that can't be your only plan. It's Burford's got this. Well, okay, him in a competition with, you know, Colton McKivitz and another rookie. But yeah. still, like, McGlinchey's gone. And if they don't sign someone like Caleb McGarry, because I, I don't think the Niners really want to spend big money on two veteran tackles. I think they want to have Trent Williams and a talented dude on a rookie deal. So Here's, here's what I would do, so Grant. Th- Okay. I've been I've been looking at these tackles and I feel like if the 49ers are able to move up top half of the second round, they can find a, a week one starter at the tackle position. There this this line, excuse me, this draft is tackle heavy. There's some okay. really good right tackles. And if it was me, if I'm the 49ers, I'm trading um to move up into the second round and getting a right tackle that you know can be a uh, a year one starter. I think those guys are out there. There's a lot of them. I think the top seven, eight tackles in this draft could be day, uh, year one starters. So I, that's what I would like to see the 49ers do. Keep Burford at right guard. And then you just have the center spot, which a lot of people are talking about with Nick Zakel or Jason Poe uh, could fill that void. And now you're cheap, right? You got Burford at right guard. You got a rookie at right tackle and, and a rookie at center. And I wouldn't rule them out. I wouldn't rule out them re-signing Jake Brendel, though. I mean, that's yeah. that's Chris Forster's project. You know, Chris yeah. Forster called that, and when we talked about Chris, we talked about Brendel to Chris Forster before the season. He was like, you know, I'm not. I don't want to compare him to Creed Humphrey, yeah. but uh, like, athletically, they're very similar. I wouldn't so, mind that. I don't know. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. I think he's a good player, and I think I think he's for the price. I think it's fine, especially if you have a rookie right tackle, uh, rookie contract right guard, rookie contract left guard. You can afford to sign Jake Brendel. I mean, if the Niners had drafted like Cam Jurgens last year instead of Drake Jackson and sat him for a year, I'd understand being like, yo, this is our starter. Like they did yeah. with Aaron Banks. You know, this is our starter. But um, Nick Zakel, I mean, he, he went for Fordham. You know, he played left tackle. You're trying to yeah. move him. This, sure, great project, but you can't just say like, that's our starting center. Are you kidding? He's it's never weird. snapped the ball in a game in his life. So you got to have someone else at least competing. But if say, say, say they have Brendel as their starting center. Burford or a rookie as their starting right tackle. And then their right guard could be, could be Jason Poe. The thing, that's the crazy thing, man, is that everyone I hear from within the organization or anyone that has a source, they're saying Nick Zakel is, is the center, um, which is weird to me because when I watched Jason Poe last year uh, in training camp, to me, he looked like the future center. And to me, with his height, I don't really want him anywhere else. But at center, I know. Um, I know. And he won but I think the right Niners right? are. Look, I think the Niners want. I think the Niners look at center kind of like the way they look at quarterback. Like you have to be an Intel Pentium two processor, yeah. and this guy like Zakel has like a master's degree, mm-hmm. and so I think they feel that um, he's really short arms too. That I, I think they feel he can only play center, mm-hmm. and that I think they've drafted him specifically for that project. And again, I, they have a really good offensive line coach, yeah. so I feel like he. If you give him a project, I'll probably bet on him getting the most out of that player but is Zakel like the next Jason P uh, excuse me um Jason Kelsey who's a sixth round pick I don't know maybe we'll see doubt maybe, it maybe pose the backup center fullback backup fullback maybe yeah or or maybe he's maybe he's a guard I mean I know he's not that big but he doesn't just have to snap the me. ball I don't just, know I, I've never been confirmed with OCD Grant but having a the shortest lineman anywhere but in the middle Bugs that shit. It bothers you. It bothers, it bothers you. Yeah. I feel you on that. Yeah. I feel you on that. Uh, Todd Labor says, Would you guys think the Niners would be interested in bringing Carson Wentz as a backup? Thanks, guys. Have a great day. I don't think so. I don't think so. Last night I felt like I had the epiphany that it's going to be Matt Ryan. Hmm. You know, like Matt Ryan has, I mean, like Matt Ryan's 37. He should stop. If he doesn't stop, what is he going to do for one more year? What are yeah. you going to do? Where are you going to go? You're not going to yeah. start anywhere. Like you're wasting your time. Or you could come to the Niners and be like, oh, I'll just be a mentor, a backup. Yeah. Thinking I'm going to get on the field. I got sentences in my contract. If I, if I already know what I can do in this offense. You give me these weapons, I'll tear it up. Yeah. And I'll win the Super Bowl. That's what he could be thinking. I wouldn't mind Matt Ryan as a third string quarterback. And that's right. what he as would a third be, string. right? Yeah. As a mentor. $1 million with incentives. Yeah. yeah, something like that. How much yeah. do you think he would make? 
I wouldn't give him much. I mean, dude, like, what are your options, yeah. man? If, if you can go get a starting job somewhere and make $10 million, go ahead. Go waste your time for $10 million. If you want to win a Super Bowl, why don't you come here, sign an incentive-laden contract, and wait. Yeah. Work for, you know, Brock. I mean, Jimmy. he knows the offense. He knows Kyle Shanahan. He would be a good mentor for Trey Lance, for Brock Purdy. So I, I wouldn't mind him as a third third string quarterback. Also, Matt Ryan is the only quarterback that Kyle Shanahan didn't get injured, didn't break. So throw that yeah. out there. Yeah. Not a big fan of Matt Ryan, though. I think he's been I think he's been washed for a while. But yeah, I just feel like that's what Kyle's gonna do. He always goes with who he knows. He's gonna bring in Mitchell Trubisky, who he doesn't know at all. And start another project along with Trey Lance or just bring in someone he knows. I'd rather have Matt Ryan than Nate Sudfeld. That's for sure. That's true. Uh, Chance Potts says, good O-line is what we need. B.A. could have a huge year with Trey because Trey can actually hit the deep route that B.A. can run. That deep threat is what we need to complement our run game in CMC. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to see Danny Gray because it seemed like Danny Gray was going to be that, that Trey Lance could actually use him. But once you know Trey Lance got Grant? injured, Danny Gray became like unusable. You know what's weird, Grant, is I didn't realize that uh, – Debo is actually tested faster on the 40 than Brandon Ayuk. Brandon oh, yeah. Ayuk seems faster to me. He ran he four or five it. flat, right? But I think he had a I think he had an injury when he ran it. Oh yeah. But he at the same time, I think yeah. four five two. Yeah. Damn, I ran a four five one when I was 18. But I ran <laughs> it on spikes and it wasn't official. It was handheld. And if you run on a if you run on a uh, a track with spikes, I think you can shave off a good tenth of a second. I Easy. think you can be a, run a, yeah, as opposed yeah. to running on grass. Yeah. So really I was a four six guy. If I was ever on a football team, it's fast. Yeah, and running though, a four six, at, running a four six at one hundred and sixty five pounds is not that fast. It's like it's really well, not. That, that's actually fast, man. Four six. Don't be humble. Don't be humble, Grant. That's fast. I mean, it's it's high school fast. It's not college. Fast. Yeah. But okay. Thank you. Let's move on. No. Do you think the Niners will draft a tight end with one of their top picks this year? I mean, they never freaking do. They've drafted George Kittle, uh, Caden Smith, and huh, Charlie Werner in six years. Three tight ends. Uh, given that Tyler Croft effectively ended the season, do you think they'll actually invest in this position this year? Um, I don't know about They've never spent more than a fifth-round pick on this position ever since John Lynch has been here. I can see them doing that, a fifth. I can see them around okay. a fifth. This, this is right. another – just like the tackle position to me, this is probably the best tight end draft class that I've seen in a while. I think they definitely need to go after a tight end. I don't see them using a top draft pick to do it. Maybe around the fourth, fifth, sixth round, you, they'll probably land a guy, and they could actually get a decent tight end around that around that range. So I definitely see that. I definitely think they need to draft a tight end. I think they will draft a tight end, um, probably around that fourth, fifth, sixth round, somewhere in there. Yeah. See, I feel like I I think so too. And the Niners, they always want to double down, right? They didn't lose because of their offensive line. The, everything they did was fine. It was just Tyler Croft. It was tough block, but he should have. So if they start like overhauling their offensive line, it kind of acknowledges that we were all right and that they were kind of like <laughs> wrong. And they right. need like something about their formulas off. They spend 15% of their cap on the offensive line. They're there right now. So all of a sudden, say, so if they start splurging, it's like, okay, they, they're changing their philosophy. They don't want to change their philosophy. Yeah, They want to prove that their philosophy is right and that they've just had bad luck. So go get a better tight end. If you want to put yeah. your backup tight end in those situations, get a good one and stop pretending that Tyler Croft is good. Yeah. I would no, think that I, would be I, one. The, they, the 49ers need a tight end, big sign. Could you imagine 49ers with two actual threats at tight end? I mean, the, the packages, especially as much as they love the run game and the short pass, I feel like that's a perfect fit for them. I would love to see them have two tight ends that are capable. If you want to be a play-action offense, the yeah. more tight ends who are actual dual threats, the better. Remember yeah. what the Niners had with Vernon Davis and Delaney Walker? That was special. That was that was amazing. Yeah, I yeah. hated seeing Delaney go. But I think, you know, from a draft standpoint, 49ers need to trade up, in my opinion, draft a right tackle this year. Next year, go get the Trent Williams replacement at left tackle. But this year, they have to grab a tight end somewhere in the middle rounds, like a Tucker oh, Craft wow. or Josh Wilde. You just Wild. brought it up. You just brought yeah. it up. See, this is what the Niners are going to do. Okay, they're going to move Burford to right tackle, but they are going to trade up for a tackle as well. But then they're going to sit him for a year, and then he's going to be a left tackle next year. Yeah, I, I think the Niners are I like the idea of redshirting offensive linemen. The reason they didn't redshirt Burford is because it's freaking right guard. They like redshirting I think everybody. They do. Yeah, but I, I think the like, right guard is the lowest position on the totem pole in the night. I think it's lower. It's, it's lower than long snapper. Tabor Pepper has guaranteed money. Whoever the starting right guard next year will be probably won't. Well, how, how many, I don't know what the percentage is, but the 49ers run the ball to the left side 
what seven more than anyone the time right it, yeah it, it's something around that could you imagine like how much better the 49ers offense and run game if you had no idea where they're going to run the ball uh it's, it's 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 predictable in that regard it's very they really got to figure out an upgrade over mike mcglinchey and the only way in my opinion that you can do that is moving up in the draft i don't think they're going to land one in free agency being that mike mcglinchey is the top free agent at that position the only way that they can upgrade at that right tackle position i don't think it's burford I think they need to move up and snatch one early second round. I like it. The thing is, if it if you move Burford to right tackle and he was good enough, now you could splurge at center or right guard because those positions are not as expensive as tackle. Yeah. Like you could go get the best right guard in the market and yeah. be like, we got, we got an impact player or yeah. get someone better than Jake Brendel. All because you're not spending, and those guys would be cheaper than Mike McGlinchey. You know what I'm saying? You get someone yeah. better than Mike McGlinchey for cheaper than Mike McGlinchey just because he doesn't play right tackle. Yeah. And now you just need someone who can hold it down. I don't know if that's Burford because I I didn't I don't know, but I it's, think they were hoping. And again, I, I'm not betting against Chris Forrester. If he thinks he sees it in a certain guy, he'll coach yeah. him up. I bet I'm thinking he knows what he's doing. That's the only reason I'm love Chris Forrester. This. Love Chris yeah. Forrester, man. If if he thinks it's a good move, um, you know, more power to him. Hopefully, it works out. But from what I saw from Burford, it doesn't make me feel confident that he's going to be able to jump out to right tackle a harder position and be able to handle it. But again. Look what they did with Aaron Banks. So what the hell do I know? You know, it is possible though that some people's bodies are more built for tackle than guard. True. I mean, this guy's six four. He's got an issue with pad level. He's got long arms and quick feet. He might just be better suited for tackle. Yeah. Because it seemed like sometimes when he did get beat in the interior, it was by guys who were you know got their pads underneath them, had a quick first step, and just blew by him. Like when yeah. Josh Johnson got beat, uh, got concussed. Burford got beat, and he got beat almost instantly by. Someone really low to the ground that shot through a gap. You know, maybe he'd be better in space. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, we have to see. I mean, it based on what I saw, it doesn't make me feel com- confident. I'd rather see him stay where he's at, and maybe we'll see a year two jump in improvement. But maybe I'm wrong I, again. I'd, I mean, I'd be more. I'd be more intrigued with him out there than McKivitz or Jalen Moore, just because he's a better athlete. Yeah, he's a better I could athlete. See that. I could see that. But I, I, that doesn't mean that anyone, any of them, are the, are good enough. Any of them. All I know is the Chiefs lost the Super Bowl and they came back and spent big on Tooney and Orlando Brown. Where they're like, we are not fucking around. While the yeah. Niners are fucking around. Yeah. But I, you always got to give Chris Forster the benefit of the doubt. That being said, if you, you talk know, to Chris Forster, I bet he'd be like, yeah, I'd like some better talent to work with. I'm just saying. You know, you don't fuck around, Grant. Here's how you don't fuck around. You trade up in this draft that is tackle heavy and you go get a freaking dope ass right tackle man and hell yeah they're out there absolutely they, they can do it and then they'll have burford second year at right guard now you got yep. a top-notch right tackle you got burford second year you got aaron banks third year you got trent williams you figure out that center position maybe brindle and now you got a good offensive line and get that fifth round tight end and you're set yeah absolutely but they haven't spent a pick higher than round six on a tight end since kittle so they this would be a good year they this would be charlie them. warner come yeah. on right Come on. What's Ross that tweet Willie you sent Aiken. out? What's that tweet you sent? Who did they draft? Lance, Vance McDonald. Oh, man. Over. Eight <laughs> picks before Travis Kelsey. And a lot of people, a lot of people are mad that I put that tweet out. Like, oh, you could play this game all day. Yeah, man. I just thought they it was can. funny. They I just, I mean, play. Travis Kelsey's going to go in the Hall of Fame. The Niners were in the market for a tight end. Trent Balky was like, Vance, Vance McDonald, Travis Kelsey. Vance McDonald, Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Vance McDonald. And I just yeah. don't know. If I remember correctly, there was something in Travis Kelsey's like, personal life that is why he fell to the third round he was way too good at cincinnati hmm. to fall that and of course andy reed doesn't care yeah. so he was like oh tyree kill travis kelsey yeah i don't care yeah uh, yeah so i don't know but i you remember uh, jim harbaugh compared uh, vance mcdonald to mike ditka the, the morning they drafted him remember that well i don't what i don't like is people say you can play this game all day yeah you can i mean that's the point though that's how they're graded right that's how you look back and say here you fucked up right here buddy you know that of course eight picks ahead of travis kelsey you're yeah. looking at the same damn position now eagles took zach Ertz ahead of travis kelsey um cowboys took a dude that was freaking awful from san diego state tight end so this is interesting and it's, it was trying it was trying balky's fault it wasn't john lynch's fault someone commented that it was weed that's why they didn't grab kelsey Oh, there you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Weed. In retrospect, that's silly. That's yeah. freaking silly. Imagine if the Warriors used that reason not to draft Clay Thompson, who's, man, did you see him last night? <laughs> yeah, he was looking good, yeah. He yeah. should get like a, 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 a sponsorship mm-hmm. just from weed in general. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, some people have like milk sponsorships. He should just be weed. He could be out on his boat. 
It does a body good. <laughs> it does a mind good. Hero Winchester says, why didn't they use Werner their blocking tight end uh, or their expensive fullback to block Hassan? Also, uh, is there a better option for CB1? Ward is, Ward is expensive. They're locked into Ward. Um, and I think they're probably going to start Lenore next year. But Warner, what did Warner ever do on this team? I don't think he had a role. Him and Dwelly had no role last year. Special teams. I mean, what has any tight end done on the 49ers besides George Kittle over the last Nothing. five years? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. The Gold Rush says, man, didn't realize Lance and the Niners were averaging 8.9 yards per play versus the Seahawks before injury. Lance with upgraded O-line is, uh, is missing ingredient to the Super Bowl. To be fair, there was a 50-something yard run from Debo Samuel that kind of skewed the stats in, okay. a, in, a, in one quarter. But yeah. still, yeah, I mean, if you go back and look at yards per play from the first game and the first five quarters of the season yeah. were high. They just weren't finishing in the red zone. There was a Debo fumbled once. I mean, it was five quarters. And there to was me, To me, Grant, I, I, I agree with the goal. The, the play for the 49ers to make a Super Bowl this year is seal that right tackle, upgrade that right tackle position, find an interior pass rush, and develop and use Trey Lance the right way. That's their shot at winning the Super Bowl, in my opinion. Lucas Bissell says, Grant, you have a business email. Love the content. No, I just have one email. Grant Cone at Gmail. One word. But only Lucas can email me. No one else watching this chat can, can email me today. Uh, <laughs> um, Lucas, uh, you out my chat in the screen but didn't read it. It's all good. No, I got you. I'm bad. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I forgot, but I got you, though. I just wanted to give me. I wanted you to give me five more dollars, and I did. I got it. <laughs> sorry for being off topic with the Lance comment. That's all good. We, 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 you know, this ain't no off topic here. Danny Gray could be our Tyreek Hill if used correctly. That's another well, player I want to see. I'd like to see him. I thought I he also had a, an end around that went for a few, that got some positive yards and never touched the ball again. Yeah. He deserves some touches. Cabo Rojo says Kyle Pitts would have affected the Niners offense a lot more than Trey Lance has. Davis Walker unlocked the offense of 2011 with limited weapons and PG death. Here's the thing, though. The Niners still would have had Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback. And um, until you have a good quarterback, you have to keep drafting quarterbacks. Yeah. Because Kyle Pitts wouldn't have, wouldn't have transcended the limit that Jimmy Garoppolo places on your team. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't yeah. have. All right, let's move on. Move on. Jordan Mason is my favorite player in the team by far. We all know this. Jordan Mason, great player. I wish I could get his jersey. And what's interesting about him was he fell through the, clack, the cracks last year. Undrafted, but really showed out. All the training camp was great in preseason, was great in the regular season. He was just really way better than an undrafted free agent. And right after... They set their 53-man roster. They had a press conference. Lynch was there. Adam Peters was there. They were asked about Jordan Mason, and they're like, they're like, how did you find this guy? And Adam Peters was like, well, to be fair, he was starting at Georgia Tech as a freshman. He averaged six yards a carry. Then they got a running back. Oh, why do I not have his name? Jameer Gibbs. He was, he was get the, yeah. Jameer Gibbs, 2021 Georgia Tech. Stats. I'm sorry. So Jameer Gibbs, if you don't know who he was, I'd never heard of him. They're like, look, this Jameer Gibbs, he's really good. He's going to be a first-round pick next year. And I'm thinking, yeah, right. Running backs are never first-round picks. Well, now the combine's coming around. He transferred to Alabama, played one year at Alabama, and now he's going to be a first-round pick. So these two were on the team together in, in 2021. Jameer Gibbs comes in, takes Jordan Mason's starting job. Of course, Jameer Gibbs is great. Both on the same team in 2021. Gibbs gets 143 carries, averages 5.2 yards per carry. Jordan Mason, number two, car number two running back on the team, gets 87 carries, averages five yards per carry. So it's interesting. I mean, I'm not saying he's as good as Gibbs, but if he had been in this draft and he could have gotten his starting job back, I think you could argue that maybe his production as a runner would be up there. I mean, he might be a day two pick. I think yeah. he has that kind of talent. I think the Niners literally – got this day two talent at running back for nothing. And I think Jameer Gibbs is going to prove that. I mean, him and Brock Purdy are probably the steal of, of the draft last year. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mason is – I forget what statistic it was, but it was – I think it was yards after contact or something like that. He was He's the top in the NFL, something like I think I, – I forget mm -hmm. what statistic it was, but the best mm -hmm. in the NFL. And yeah. it's crazy. Again, Kyle Shannon didn't use him, of course, uh, as much as we all wanted, but – you know, I'm expecting him to make a big jump. You know, hopefully Elijah Mitchell can stay healthy, but, you know, he's had a tough time staying on the field. So this could be a big year for Jordan Mason. And even if Elijah Mitchell is healthy, they need to get Jordan Mason involved because what he's shown is that he is an elite running back uh, based on last year. And I, I want to see a bigger sample size before I call him that. Um, but from what we saw last year, he was phenomenal. Like, 
he led the 49ers, right? In the yards per carry. Yeah, 6.2. Here's the thing, though. I think Mason was 6.0. Mm -hmm. And, like, let me get that, actually. I want to know what they were. But here's, here's my thing. I feel like if you look at the history of running backs on the Niners under Kyle Shanahan, he um goes through them every year. He has never had a running back lead the team in rushing more than once. Yeah. Ever on this team. It was Carlos Hyde, mm -hmm. and then it was Matt Breida, and then it was Raheem Mostert, and then it was... Who was it in 2020? 2020 was uh, – uh, let me find out for you. Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Okay, and then Elijah Mitchell. 2021 was Elijah Mitchell. 2022 yeah. is Christian McCaffrey. So yeah. if this pattern – and what Jordan does he do? Mason. He gets – he just runs these guys into the ground. He uses them up real fast. Hmm. So if that's the, the pattern, then don't draft Christian McCaffrey on your team this year. That's the guy who played 10 games in two seasons. I'm saying the pattern is he's going to get hurt. On, uh, under Kyle Shanahan this year, sorry. And Jordan Mace is going to rush for 1,500 yards this year. That's the yeah. pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Knock on wood. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't, I'm not trying to, yeah. I'm trying to reverse jinx it. I'm trying to reverse <laughs> right. jinx it. Right. But honestly, right. at the same time, he's next man up. Jordan There's a Mason. He'll, prob he'll probably start the season as third in the depth chart, but he could be starting by week two, the way Kyle Shanahan goes through these running backs and the way the luck he's had. So I mean, Elijah so. Mitchell and CMC both are not known for their, uh, you know, no. availability, put it that way. Yeah. And so, God, God knows what you're going to get from Elijah Mitchell at this point. I love Elijah Mitchell, but man, the injuries are piling up. Yeah. Yeah, he had three last yeah. year, right? I feel like he's, even when he was good as a rookie, he would go two, three games injured, two, three yeah. games injured, and then he was always, I don't know about that. As opposed to Jordan Mason, who's a freaking tank! Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's tough. I mean, it takes a certain player to be able to run, play running back. I mean, Frank Gore is the, the, the peak example. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with pad level, getting low, and just being tough as shit but i mean <clears throat> that's why you don't run trey lance in the middle because he has the highest pad level of any person i've ever seen run through the middle <laughs> but anyways yeah it's that's a true. different topic yeah i just thought it was interesting last year when people were like well, yeah, well jordan mason where'd you find him and adam people was like well, yeah. look i mean he kind of got buried by jameer gibbs you guys don't know who jameer gibbs is yet but he's gonna he's really good he just transferred to alabama and we're all like yeah we have no idea who jameer gibbs is now we do he's in the combine we're gonna watch him this week he's going to be first round pick and it's like oh okay so this is the guy who pushed out jordan mason all right we'll go back and look at their resume together on the same team it yeah. was quite similar like yeah. okay maybe this guy had hella hype and this guy didn't but actually they're kind of s the end some result is pretty similar i don't know i guess we'll see what happens but i i'm very bullish on jordan mason in the league like this yeah. guy is not your typical undrafted free agent he's better than that oh yeah by far i mean yeah. the numbers the yeah. numbers show you yeah Lamonte757 says, just saying, Grant, you did a take that Matty Ice could come here, but I super chatted that on your show a week before. You laughed in my chat. Here's the thing I do. I take other people's ideas. I laugh at them, and then I wait a week, and then I steal them as my own. Yeah. Dang, bro, you stole you stole Kudo. How many weeks before they get Trey? Sorry, Lamonte. That's my bad. The thing is, I, I don't want them to get Matty Ice, but I'm trying to think like Kyle, who thinks the exact opposite of me, and I think, oh, of course he's going to get Matty Ice. Yeah. Of course. I mean... That's kind of what the 49ers need at that third string spot. They need a veteran. They need that understands Kyle's system. Uh, it makes sense, actually. You know, I I thought he was washed. I do think he's still washed. But as a third stringer, hopefully he'll never even see the field and he could be valuable in the quarterback room. Only thing is that in his prime at 31, he didn't get it done. And now you're in a league where old quarterbacks don't don't make it so far. I didn't make it that far this year. Yeah. You got to be pretty athletic and you got to be pretty quick and you got to be able to move. Yeah. And Matt Ryan is none of those things, man. God, yeah. he's a sitting duck. He's the yeah. least mobile quarter. He is. I mean, he makes Tom Brady look quick, but he knows the system and that's the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, I hopefully again, like, I mean, hopefully he doesn't have to, I know 16 teams used three quarterbacks last year. So, I mean, it's possible he could see the field, but I think his value could be, you know, in practice and in the in the quarterback room. Hopefully, George L says, "Grant, you should do some food vlogs from sports uh, from spots in the Bay Area." I intend to. It's just been pouring, and, but I yeah. the first one I intend to do. I want to show you guys my favorite burrito spot, and it's a place that none of y'all go to. It's it's my secret spot. Yeah, although it's the OG spot in Oakland, so we I'm need, show we you guys do that. need that content. That is top notch. It's content. important. It's yeah. much more, and especially this week before the combine gets going. Yeah. Jose, man, dang, $100? dude, hundred dollars? Why? For no, For no reason? 
Wow. You got to say, you didn't even say nothing? You could Say I'm handsome or something. Say I, you like my shirt. Jose. Jose, no, actually, I, I want to say I like you. You're handsome. You're, you're, a, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Nice I eyes. I love your style and your moves. So thank great you, Jose. Eyes. Great eyes. If, I, I, that's probably not you in that profile pic, but those eyes. Are I just want to say, like, he, so he's got the, the, he's got the ninja look right now or the, the full ski mask. You walk around Philly. There are people wearing full ski masks out. Like, what is yeah. going on? Is that a look in the East Coast? Like, man, I'm terrified. Yeah, it's freezing. COVID made it acceptable. You know, see, I, it wasn't. It wasn't even because it was freezing. I feel like it's a COVID holdover. Like, I'm just. I like yeah. this look. I'm going yeah. ski mask. Yeah. Before you would walk into the store, ski mask. COVID. That's you'll get arrested for that. Now. So, like, oh, we have to wear my. We have to wear masks. Okay, cool. I'm going ski mask. Yeah. See, which, that always reminds me of Master P. Like back in the day, he had that uh, group True, and it was just the it was just him and his brothers wearing ski masks and yeah. gold teeth, right? I always wondered if like bank robberies were up during COVID because everyone was allowed to wear masks, and you could just walk into a bank wearing a mask. This is how Ryan thinks, right here. This Sorry, is how guys. Ryan thinks. I'm just <laughs> he was in the romper room gang thirty years ago. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so the combine's happening this week, and everyone's looking for the next Brock Purdy. Um, Purdy highlighted certain traits that people overlook, experience being one of them, yeah. but also playing for a team that's not a freaking powerhouse. You know, being in Division One football, but playing for a team that's not dominant. Uh, sometimes those quarterbacks can be better in the NFL. Because if you're lucky enough to get drafted by a team that's stacked, now your whole experience gets easier. And I think that's something that teams don't look at very much. I'm not saying that Stroud and, and Bryce Young won't be good because they were on stacked teams. But if we're looking for the next Brock Purdy, we've got to remember that Brock Purdy played at Iowa State, which was just a school in the Big 12. So that's why I feel like these two quarterbacks have nothing in common other than this. But Will Levis, okay, a lot of people think he's trash. But I think it's important to remember that he still completed 65% of his throws in two different seasons at Kentucky. He was playing at Kentucky. Kentucky freaking sucks. He was in the SEC. He was basically a 500 quarterback. If he were on the 49ers, and he won't make it to the 49ers, and the Niners won't draft him. But if he were on the 49ers, it, he, you, and you'd ask him, I bet you'd say, yeah, this is a lot easier than college. And it's sometimes worth trying to find quarterbacks like that. I think part of the problem with him, and I'm not a super great scout but i think he's on a terrible team and he's probably doing a little hero ball probably doing a little too much purdy talked about that at iowa state he's like you know what a lot of times i had i developed bad habits from trying to do too much because we weren't that great now all i have to do is just be a point guard yeah. so now you have a guy in will levis who has shown he has the accuracy to do that with his completion percentage but he's also big he's also has a strong arm he's pretty much the prototypical athlete at the position i wouldn't just write him off a lot of people think he's trash I mean, if he goes to the Chicago Bears, yeah, he's screwed. Just like Justin Fields. But if he goes to a team with some talent, he might. That's a guy who could look better in, in the NFL than in college. Where do you think Will Levi? So his name is pronounced what? Levis? I think it's Levis. I think it's Levis. I've been calling him Levi's. I've been so, calling him Levi. What do you think? He also had a bad senior year. His OC was Rich Scangarello. Niner fans know that guy is terrible. Yes. Awful. And yeah. he got fired immediately. He got fired in November, Scangarello. So. Yeah. I'm not saying this guy should be a top five pick, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying he shouldn't. And I think the way I look at it, here's the way I look at it. People get really scared about drafting quarterbacks, and sometimes they'll, they'll pass on them all together. If you draft a bad quarterback, you can just draft another one the next year. Yeah. It's not, I mean, that's what the Cardinals did with Josh Rosen. If you draft an average quarterback in round one, he's still a bargain because average quarterbacks get paid $30 million a year in free agency. And if you draft a good uh, quarterback, you got a freaking steal. So yeah. it just seems like, man, he might be good. He might be average. If he's bad, you just draft another one. I think he's got enough intriguing traits and things on his resume that warrant a pick in the first round if you're desperate. Yeah, I, there's a guy that I've been uh, looking at that I think you could probably get in the fifth round is Aiden O'Connell. Okay. Uh, from Purdue, 6'3", 10, four-year starter, uh, accurate, uh, he just seems like a guy I've been looking at a little bit. Seems like he could be a, a guy that you might want to just look into a little deeper and get let you can get later on the rounds. And again, if he hits Purdue's he hits. another Purdue's another school like that. You know, yeah. that's it's just a school. It's it's not a powerhouse in the Big Ten right. at all. Right. Yeah. 
So yep. I, he, he and you know he's a little bigger. He's a six three guy, four year starter. Uh, I mean, his and like junior, Purdy, I imagine he's gone through adversity. Lost junior games, year, won games. Yeah, junior year seventy one point six completion percentage. He's sixty four this last year. I mean, twenty eight touchdowns. Junior year twenty two this year. Uh, he just seems solid, man. His junior year was phenomenal. He had one hundred fifty eight quarterback 158.5 yeah. quarterback rating so he's another guy that intrigues me that you think the Niners could get later on in the draft let me look up Aiden O'Connor real quick because yeah. the other thing I mean that's the only thing that Levis and Purdy have in common Levis only threw 700 something passes in college and the yeah. thing about him that kind of scares me that makes me feel a little bit like Mitchell Trubisky here is that man he couldn't get on the field at Penn State he yeah. could not get on the field at Penn State he had to transfer and leave and go to Kentucky to mm -hmm. play yeah. it was like Man, who the hell was a quarterback at Penn State? Yeah. Not any, anyone in the NFL. And J the, Franklin, whoever the coach was there, was like, yeah, we're good, man. Like, uh, maybe they felt like, dude, you're a losing player. You're just going to go out here and throw picks, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go 10-2 and two with whoever this quarterback is who's not going to the NFL, and I don't care. So yeah. that was Trubisky, right? Trubisky was sitting on the bench for a hell of a long time in North, at North Carolina behind nobodies. Finally yeah. had a good year, and it's like, okay, well, what was going on, dude? Like, why couldn't you get on the field? And a lot of people are bringing up this Jake Honer guy. I think, you know, I don't, I think Hainer. Hainer, because he's a Bay Area. He's local. He's a local he's a, guy, yeah. Yeah, but I don't Monta know if Vista. that translates. I don't know. I don't know much about him. So over these next month, I'm going to be He's had injury him. issues. Uh, yeah, we don't want I'm just saying. I Aiden O'Connell. I'm not drafting okay. guys with injury issues, period. Aiden O'Connell, his, his, res, his resume looks legit. I mean, he's got 1,200 throws in college. He completed 66%. He threw... 65 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. I mean, he kind of checks all the resume boxes. I haven't seen him play. Now he has no he's he rushed for negative 274 yards. He's, he's not mobile. He's not mobile. He rushed for negative 270. And that's to me like <laughs> yeah. I think mobility is kind of a you need it. I think you need it in the in the NFL today. I don't think you can just stand in one spot. No. But I haven't seen him play. Maybe he maybe that's just the offense. Maybe he yeah. does have some mobility. I don't know. Yeah. If you go it's back and look at Brock Purdy's resume, he had tons of rushing numbers though. Touchdowns, yards. Yeah. He did. Yeah, he did. But you're looking at round five. So, I mean, this guy's interesting as a passer. Why didn't uh, Kyle ever run Brock Purdy? I think he had one, what, draw? That was it? Yeah, but call it quarterback I draw. mean, that was bad. I mean, Brock Purdy's not a slow guy, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's not like I would, I, I don't want to run him. I'm just being a little facetious, facetious well, here. Well, yeah. Are, are you trying to insinuate that Kyle wanted to protect Brock because he didn't protect him on that seven step drop? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Kyle won't be calling that for any quarterbacks anymore. Jose, you are really about to make me start twerking right now. Twerking. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Well, I'm going to have to make it clap, Jose. No, I can't. I might have to log off. I might have to log off. <laughs> <if that happens. laughs> I've never had someone just throw 120 bucks and for no reason. I mean, like, what do you Come expect? Channel, Jose. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Grant, Jose Aguirre, the super chatter, wants. You to shout out Brandon for him. Something I noticed in the comments a few minutes ago. Hey, shout out Brandon. Brandon, Brandon who? Ayuk. Brandon, Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk? Brandon. Who are the famous Brandon. Brandons? I don't know. Famous I don't know Brandon, any Brandon. Brandon. Brandon Lee. Brandon Lee. Rest in peace. Rest Brandon in peace. Lee. Um, Brandon. Brandon, Brandon There's Haywood. Brandon. There's famous Brandons. There's a lot of famous Brandons. There's How many Brandons? Brandon. No. Brandon Ayuk. Good name, though. Brandon yeah. Ayuk. Shout out to Brandon Hayuk or whoever Jose's friend is. Todd Labor says, have you guys seen any film on Sean Clifford from Penn State? He's a good passer and runner. Kind of reminds me of Brock Purdy. Is that the guy that, that Will Levis couldn't beat out? Sean Clifford? Maybe that's the guy the Niners need to draft. Yeah. Sean Clifford. I got to check him out. I've only seen a little bit, so I'll check him out more. I, that must I haven't be the guy. I have into quarterbacks because I feel like, you know, if they do draft a quarterback, it's going to be late rounds. It's not going to probably be a starter, so I haven't really spent any time on quarterbacks. He wants Brandon. to see me twerk. I mentioned, oh, I, I, I said the word twerk, and all of a sudden there's another 20. You said, you got. Jose, I'm not actually going to twerk. Damn, that's false advertising. But I can, though. That's false advertising. I can back it up and dump it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So we, pause. So we just yeah. talked about this year's Brock Purdy, and I don't know if we found him. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about this year's Trey Lance, and I think it's obvious who this year's Trey Lance is. And I'm not saying in a good or a bad way, but it's. Trey Lance is someone who has almost no resume. Almost nothing. But you can't deny the physical tools. And that the physical skill set alone puts mm -hmm. him in the first round consideration. And then you do look at his resume and there are, you look at the highlights, there are some things there. You know who I'm thinking of? 
Uh, I want to hear your. I want to hear you. Anthony you Richardson. Know. Yeah. Anthony Richardson. Yeah. I mean, he has no resume, and the resume that he has, honestly, Purdy's might be better. Purdy's played at a smaller school, but Purdy's Purdy won. <laughs> Purdy Lance played at a smaller school, but he won a national championship. And actually, had a, a good completion percentage. I mean, and he's a big Richardson dude. completed 54 percent of his throws, so he really doesn't have. He's all hype. That yeah. being said, he's going to be one of the best athletes in the NFL immediately once he gets in that yeah. league. I his mean, tape, way. His some of the stuff he put on tape is crazy. Like talk about wow throws, wow plays. Yeah. Oh my god, he has he has the most of them any quarterback in this class. Yeah, somebody I I saw a play where he pumped, they had pump faked it. Dude was in his face. He spun off, spun juked around, another guy. That's the other yeah, and he's six four, two thirty, big dude. Uh, yeah, that's who I was actually thinking of. I probably should have just said it, but yeah, I think. He's another Trey Lance type of uh, player. I mean, he's a sophomore, not a lot of experience, um, but he does come from Florida, which is a better school than than North Dakota State by far. So maybe it'll help translate in in the next level. But I, like I said, I like you said, I think he's the best athlete at the position, one of them at least. Yeah, yeah. Justin Fields looks like the best athlete in the at the position right now in the NFL, and I think Richardson could be better. Like he's built more like Cam Newton, but he runs a four four. Yeah, it's crazy. Are you kidding me. Yeah. Now that being said, we gotta we gotta caution this here because while you do want athleticism at quarterback and size, it's not everything. And it'd be interesting. I wonder. I'd like to know what his <laughs> cognitive aptitude test would be. Yeah. And uh, his accuracy. Like, what's up with that, man? Like, why are you completing fifty four percent of your throws? Because his arm. He's got a deep, he's got a nice arm deep. I've, I saw that in, in it from his tape. But yeah, again, it also depends on the offense that they're running. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of, who knows what it's kind true. of offense. all of that? But like, if you're a bad passer. And a great athlete, you can't play quarterback in the NFL. Like I could think of guys who were six six, ran four fours, and were just some of the best athletes. In, one of the best athletes in the league couldn't play quarterback. I'm thinking Terrell Pryor. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. not saying Anthony Richardson is Terrell Pryor, but just being six five and three two thirty five and running a four four eight doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a great quarterback. It might mean you need to move to wide receiver one year or tight end. Tight end. But yeah. if he's a a serviceable quarterback. On a rookie deal, yeah. damn, that guy might be a problem. So yeah. I don't really know what to think of Anthony Richardson right now. He might be a worthwhile project yeah, he, for someone. The only thing be, is, he'll be gone sorry. quick. He'll be gone way before only, the Niners get a chance. Yeah. Only thing with project quarterbacks is like, okay, you, you sit him for a year. Yeah, but you're trying to take advantage of that rookie contract, right? Yeah. You want him on the freaking field as soon as possible. So yeah. I'm gonna be interested to see how people handle it. It did work out with the Eagles sitting Jalen Hurts for like three quarters of a year. So maybe, maybe uh, Shane Steichen in Indianapolis will. Do the same thing with Richardson. Yeah. Or or trade for Trey. Or trade for Trey. <laughs> Post June 1. Yeah. Yeah, it could be interesting. Um, Ethan says, I'm going to make it clap Grant Cohen 2023. It's, <laughs> One it's thing I noticed in Miami. On a Monday for, for twerking. On my, in Miami. Do they play a lot of Sean Paul in Miami? Yeah, and Pitbull. Yeah. It was like, look, we all listen to Sean Paul and Pitbull in like, you know. 2003 yeah. to 2007 but like they're still playing that 24 7 in miami it's like guys when i was younger enough. everyone used to call me that and when i lived in oakland sean paul no, pitbull pitbull, pitbull. Yeah. <laughs> i can see it yeah. i like I it i like it yeah. Yeah. yeah hey pitbull's an entrepreneur yeah who is this year's patrick mahomes who is, is this year's one? greatest quarterback of all time <laughs> there's not one i don't think there is um the shout out is for Brandon. The money is not for you to twerk. If you do that, I think I'll stop watching the show. I don't play that. Wow. Brand, who's Brandon? I'm not amused. I don't know. Just yeah. kidding. I'm not going to quit the show. Just don't ever twerk. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Grant, if you twerk, no, no. that will make a lot of people stop watching. <laughs> Jose is really <laughs> upset right now. He's like, whoa, that is not what I asked for. <laughs> Spend my money correctly. If yeah. I get if I twerk on live on my YouTube channel, how quickly do you think I'll get my YouTube channel suspended? Just because people just from offending people's senses and burning their know, eyes. Like, it is suspended. It probably should be suspended, but I don't know if it would. Probably. You get a whole different kind anyway. of audience. You probably gain lose some subs and gain uh, you know others. <laughs> 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 all right well thanks for watching i'm sorry i didn't twerk this week but there's always next week um <laughs> right i want to also 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 uh if you've been watching the show i've been doing this with ryan for the last few months ryan's really good and one of the things that's cool about ryan is he's uh works very hard on his own channel he 
does exactly what I would do if I were him starting the channel this year. I mean, he brings on all, all the content creators. He's interviewing people. He's getting all their perspective. His channel's really good. And if you haven't subscribed to it already, I would recommend it. I do. Ryan Hensley, you're going to see him talk to a lot of the people who are on my channel. But he has a very good, um, he's a good interviewer. He's a good guest, but he's also a good interviewer. His channel is phenomenal. He updates it every day. I would recommend subscribing to it if you haven't already. So do that right now. Thanks, man. Appreciate and, it. It's just Ryan G. Yeah. Hensley. And uh, I had 46 guests on uh, since I started. And uh, it's been like six months. So I appreciate it. I'm just yeah. Tuesday and Fridays right now um, during the off season. But yeah, if you guys yeah. want to subscribe, oh, okay. I would appreciate it. Yeah. Also, um, if he gets to 10,000 subscribers soon, he's going to twerk live on his channel. So that's there's that. Guaranteed. And Guaranteed. Don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Jose, thank you. And I didn't mean to um, scare you. Take care. <laughs>